Hey guys, it's Onin. Today on Onin's Rights, I want to talk a little bit about the current energy system in the game and some problems that people are having with it. There's a couple of things I want to touch on and we'll just start off with the first thing. So, we've had during design some issues with the question of should ultimates be interruptible and what should happen when you do so. And primarily people were complaining because you had channel ultis like Jade's that you could just start casting and then you had no way to stop her from doing so. You could see her so she couldn't re-aim. She'd have to shoot in the same direction constantly, but especially for Jade, it doesn't really matter. Your AoE is still likely going to hit someone even when you do get CC'd, depending on how you use it. So that was a problem and... We had some experiments with how to fix that, which eventually led to the current system where basically only channeled ultis are interruptible because all the other ones cast so quickly. And when you do interrupt a channeled ultimate, it gets stopped with the amount of energy you had left from spending only a part of it on your ultimate remaining. Whereas if you try to cancel cast, you lose all of it. So you can't benefit from it yourself. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is really that great of a solution. Because if you play Jade like I do often, you might have noticed some matchups make this really stupid. If a Shifu jumps on you and starts to use Whirlwind in your face, you tend to use Blast Vault to get away from that, which stuns him and gives him almost all of his energy back. So he chases after you and immediately has his ulti again. Like it literally doesn't do anything just because of this specific uh, mechanic in our Blast Vault. And it just feels bad in general. Like in the majority of cases, interrupting someone's interruptible ultimate feels like a worse choice. You prefer to just avoid it, space away, get away some other way to make it do nothing and also waste all of his energy in the process. Like, it just feels uneven. And then there's all of the other ultimates that just always work unless they miss, which a bunch of them, like... Say, Igniter ulti, Ashka, which is such a big hitbox that it's really difficult to miss, especially on lower ranges. It has some... Re-aiming issues, which is something else as old latency rather than such. But it just kind of feels like we went from absolutely no counterplay to a tiny bit more counterplay, which is actually just as likely to backfire as it is to help you. So I don't know how much better that really is. So one system we had during testing was one where Getting your ultimate interrupted as any character would cost you 25 energy. And most people really didn't like that because it was actually pretty easy to get interrupted by something simple. Like just a random bouncing taser shot or an AoE stun that wasn't aimed at you or some other mini stun. I mean, we've only gotten more of these, so it might be a really bad one. I mean... All of Freya has to do is jump on top of you while you have static up and oops, there went your ulti and 25 energy down the drain. So there were a lot of reasons why it didn't work, but personally I actually loved it because it gave you a true counterplay to people's ultimates being up. It made you so hyper aware of when they had enough energy what you could do against it, what kind of interrupts you had that you could use against it, how long you try to save them to just get that one value interruption. And if you had your own ultimate, you'd be hyper aware of what kind of tools they had to deal with it and how to make sure they didn't counter your ultimate and you'd lose out on all of that value. So I really loved that system and it may have been too punishing, but I gotta feel like there has to be some way to make it work. Because the main reason I love it kind of ties into the second thing I want to talk about. Which is this thing right here. 
So, the rune was added in Bloodline Champions for a very specific reason. It was to force fights. Before the rune existed, people would just stay at range, kind of throw things occasionally, you know. But if your opponent didn't make any obvious mistake that you could jump on, you would have absolutely no reason to go any further than this from an opponent. Even ranged heroes like Shifu, like Freya, would just stand as far away as possible and keep spamming whatever ranged attack they had until they had a very good reason to jump in. So they added the rune, and the rune was the reason to jump in. So the Bloodline Champions, the first problem we had was that it was on a consistent timer, so you just immediately just space on top and snatch it and then space back out because you're a croak, and that was just what you did and who you picked for that. So then they made it a bit of a random timer so that you couldn't absolutely time it out perfectly and it was you know, kind of a risk to jump in and try and get it, but you know, it, it worked okay enough. It was a good fight starter. And I think that's what this rune is even better for. Like, the fact that it's destructible was just a brilliant touch. It means that even though you know exactly the very point where it starts, you have to shoot something at it. Which means you're using cooldowns and you're allowing for counterplay with like trances or with knockbacks. With other ways to get it out of the way. That's all really good. The problem is that it... I think I mentioned this before in an earlier episode. It does lead to imbalances where some characters are just better at rune control than others. Like Freya practically only has one thing she can do which is counter in front of it. She doesn't have a good damage combo like what is this still 14 health left after I'm using three of my abilities this is worthless so sometimes you just have a team that is rather unlikely to get the rune but primarily the problem is the snowballing the fact that you get a whole 25 energy from this thing which then adds up to the amount of chip damage you've done before that and often just immediately goes you up to 50. Like, you just get so much faster ultis than your opponents. Generally, when you get the rune, you're in the position, the more offensive position. That means you've already built as much, if not more, energy than your opponent, so it's always an advantage. And sometimes it just feels like this rune is just making games one-sided. It's snowballing teams into victory. It's like you can't do anything about it because of your team comp or sometimes even because of bad luck because someone else timed a follow-up on your snipe or whatever have you a little bit better than you. Like you have to coordinate getting this last 12 damage out and if you're a good team you should be able to do that. But sometimes someone manages to just sneak those tiny last bit of damage through there in between your little combo and you just get screwed through something that it is their skill but it feels so random that it might as well not be. And it just seems like such a big difference, the 25 energy that goes to everyone, it's always also rather imbalanced in 2s versus 3s. Like in 2s you get a total of 50 energy, it's 2 EXs or both players like 3-4 abilities closer to their ultimate. And in 3s you get 75 energy total, you get 3 whole EXs. It's harder to get it in threes because there's six total champions trying to get the last hit on this thing so it becomes more chaotic the reward is so much higher it just feels inherently unbalanced in many ways and that's why I super loved the 25 energy penalty on getting interrupted on your ultimate because if you lost the rune you suddenly had a game plan like, right now, your game plan, quote-unquote, for losing the rune is just... How can I get more energy than them? And how can I not get blown up by their ultimates? Or, hopefully, how can I get them to just waste an EX? To let them use one that doesn't do anything so that I can have my 25 energy deficiency back and be on even ground again. 
But when there was a fee for using your ultimate and getting it interrupted, that could just be the game plan. You could just think, I just need one interruption on one ultimate and I'm good, I'm fine, I'm even. And from that point, I can prevent the snowball and kill them and get back into the round that way. And that felt really good. That felt, to me, super tense, super engaging. I just loved that. And it's really hard to think of a way to, like, say to everyone, to accommodate everyone. Because most people didn't like it because it felt too punishing to get interrupted on one... Like, just by a random interrupt, a random stun, something you just didn't see coming from the other side of the map. Or just felt like this was the best opportunity, but someone else found you and you were punished too hard for it. I want to see that being the case. I want to see being punished for using your ultimate in a non-safe environment just being the case. But the punishment has to be something that's... You know, handleable, it's doable, it's good enough. And I think I might have an idea of how to make it work. So on some characters we have this thing. Inspiration that increases your maximum energy by 25. And this feels so interesting to me. I mean, you always take it because of the energy generation, which is like, fine. But then you also have... The idea that... Let me just build the MG. I can ultimate right now. I've not got a full bar, but I can ultimate already. And I can think to myself, is it worth ulting now? Or should I save it? Should I save up to 500, to 5 bars of energy? Because then, when I use my ultimate, I have space for an extra EX. Which actually can make a really big difference. Sometimes you... I'm sure you've had the situation where you use your ultimate and you're like... Shit, I need 25 energy so I can use like this or... This or whatever have you. Like there are plenty of reasons to really really want 25 energy and using your ultimate at 100 makes you unable to and makes you really punishable. So that made this interesting. But... Imagine if we put the penalty back in, what that means for 125 energy players, champions. You pay 100 for this ultimate, you get it interrupted, you still have 100 energy. Because you had 25 spare to start with. Does that just fix everything? Suddenly you can, you have two tries on using your ultimate in the optimal situation. You can eat one interrupt and still have it left. That would actually, I think, just fix everything. So I don't mean give every champion in the game that right on turn 4. I think it might be interesting to try out straight up giving Every single champion, 125 max energy. Just have this energy bar be standard for everyone. I think that would be really interesting. And then there's one more thing we can think about, which is the rather odd differentiation between these double bar EXs that some characters have and others don't. I'm not sure if it was ever the intention of the devs to have everyone have a 2 bar EX. And I'm not sure how actively they're really looking at whether these things are useful because... Honestly, things like Searing Flight feel very weak for the 2 energy. And then there used to be... Where is he? Oh yeah, he's on page 2. Shifu used to have 2 energy bars on Harpoon, except it would... Travel. There we go. It would drag them immediately towards you, and now it has just a specific range that it drags people. Which at max range isn't enough to get close enough, and at lower range is enough. So 
it made it weaker at highest range, but in turn reduced the energy cost that it would actually be worth using. If it were just to you give everyone five bars, then those two point EXs become a bit more attractive because they might just not cost as much depending on how the energy gain is balanced for five bars. And you might just get into situations where you can afford to use them more often because you have a lot of max banked, you just don't have a situation to use your ultimate in, and the 2 bar EX can become more valuable for you. So I think in all ways, this might just give them a lot more design space in general, and at the same time really balancing the EX economy that seems to be a little bit out of whack at the moment. I'm not sure whether the best situation would be to have plain 100 energy, put it in 5 segments of 20, and then put the penalty for being interrupted to 20 so that it's easier for you to build a new one. And that also makes EXs cheaper and the double EXs cheaper so that you can have more reasons to spam those and not build your ultimates just straight up immediately. That kind of works against the rune advantage, since you'd be more inclined to use it. And also just the advantage would be less, because you'd be getting 20, just one bar, instead of 25. That might be a way to balance things better. Or it might be interesting to look into the 125% energy, which means... You get your max energy slower, you get your ultimate just as fast as normal, but... Getting your ultimate interrupted is penalized a lot stronger while giving you the option to save for full to reduce that penalty pretty significantly. Because I really think the main complaint people had about the penalty on ultimate interruptions was just you try your ultimate, it doesn't work, and now you're in this really awkward situation where you clearly feel like you're at a higher power point. But because you lost your energy, you have to go back to, like, normal gameplay to get that energy back up before you can retry ulting. So I think getting two chances to get the perfect ulti is... Feels a lot less punishing and feels more natural while still performing the same duty as the interrupt is supposed to. I think, primarily, something needs to be done, and I think Stunlock shouldn't be afraid to experiment with some more radical things, and also especially not just give up on the things that they've tried before and that didn't quite work out. Like, there are different ways to iterate on a mechanic that at first seemed bad, but it can become good with the right form instead of just being disregarded immediately and I think the current energy gain the current energy farming meta has a bit of an issue that causes some balance concerns with the orb destruction orb control stuff and just with the snowballiness of some matches and I think the way that ultimate interruption works just doesn't really feel very interesting in a way Channeled ultimates barely even feel punished for getting interrupted because you still get like half of your bar back. You've already done most of your damage and everyone else just doesn't get any punishment whatsoever. So for them it's like nothing ever changed. I think these things are issues and I think it takes some experimentation to figure out what feels the best. And I think Stunlock should be open to those changes and you know, try things out. Just go beta test stuff. So let me know what you think in the comments. And see you guys next time.